What's happening to YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day. Why? Because we're talking plants, that's why. Uh, today is going to uh, explain to you why you're having trouble starting off. All right, so let me walk you through the scenario of how this all plays out when we first get going. Oh, we, we buy a tank, maybe a tank set up with a random light, random filter, random substrate, all of that, and we decide we want to get some plants. But we're a little scared, you know, to buy several plants because we don't know how it's going to pan out for us. So maybe we buy uh, one or two max different types of plants, typically just one. How do I know? Because that's what I did, and I can't be the only one. Uh, and we take the plant home or the other, you know, two plants, put it in the tank, and every day we come home and we look at it and we're like, ooh, I hope it's still doing well. If it's doing well in a week, I'm going to get some of that Althanobaneki I saw because it's red. And by the way, if you stay to the end of the video, I'm going to show you local aquatic plants that you can find uh, anywhere from as south as Texas to as north as Minnesota. Uh, so anyway, we, we put the plant in our tank and it dies a week later. What do we do after that? Well, we hop on YouTube and we start uh, YouTubing videos, five easiest aquarium plants. My 10 favorite easiest aquarium plants. None of that is gonna work for you and I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, any plant that is suggested to you by somebody else it doesn't matter if a billion people agree that it's the easiest. They can't speak for what's going on in your house and what kind of tap water you have and what's going on. All right. Uh, so you actually should be doing the exact opposite of what your initial thought is. Uh, instead of spending $10 on one or two plants and hoping it works out because we know absolutely nothing. You know nothing about parameters or how much light plants want or why one died or whatever. Uh, we know nothing. Okay, we buy a plant and hope for the best. All right. So if, if we're gonna gamble, because that's what we all do in the beginning, you need to gamble uh, where the odds are in your favor. Spend fifty bucks on at least a half a dozen different plants. Take them all home. Plant them all and one of them will be suitable to the conditions that you've set up. All right, and the one that you are successful with, stick with that and that'll hold you over while you're learning the rest. Because none of this can be learned in a six minute video of the easiest plant. You know, because uh, some of us, we fail our first plant and, and whatever plant that was, we're sitting there digging through every video trying to figure out where we went wrong. Uh, it, it, you just can't do it that way. All right. Um, <laughs> First, find a plant that you're su successful with, stick with that for a bit, and then, like me, because I wanted to be able to grow all plants, I realized I needed to make my water from scratch. I have crappy tap water. Most of America has ta uh, crappy tap water. There are a few out there who have uh, exemplary water that is spring-fed, but even that one person who has great water can't say that its next door neighbor is going to have the same result if they're successful with plants. And the reason being is because there are a lot of factors. Uh, you don't know how old your neighbor's pipes are, if they're getting more iron and rust in their tap, you know, etc. There's a lot of things going on that you, you haven't explored yet. Uh, maybe you've gotten as far to understand the nitrogen cycle. Uh, maybe you've gotten as far to understand the difference between hard water and soft water because there's a lot of mistakes that happen there, but if you want to cut in line and figure out what's going to work for you without having to do hardly any research or work, you're going to have to cough up a few extra bucks. Buy a pack of it all. Plant all of it. The survivors are what you're going to stick with right now, and over the next year or two while you're figuring all this out, you'll figure out a way to make a uh, water acceptable for every plant that you are attracted to. So let's say you've already burned the buck and you don't want to go back to the store and cough and shell out more money. All right. Uh, I'm going to be posting up uh, several videos here of I actually went to 
my local lakes to pull out plants to show you what you will find that, that grows all over the United States. Because the majority of our uh, aquatic plants or aquarium plants that are being sold, they're not native to here. They're all overseas, uh, you know, and then they're sold to us. And the ones that we do have are invasive. Uh, you know, so they, they didn't, they, they don't occur around here naturally. They just got here. Uh, so I, I got a few videos. The first uh, plant that I want to show you is called hornwort. Uh, and before anyone dives into my uh, comment section and be like, should be taking plants from the local lake like that. What are you doing? All right. It's, it's not the worst thing that you could be doing. And secondly, if you're on private property, it's perfectly okay. Uh, you know. And secondly, if you're at a public park, it sounds like a contradiction, but if you're at a public park, it's actually considered a public service if, we're, if you remove some of these plants, even if it's just a handful, uh, because the city has to pay taxes to poison the public swim areas and lakes. So they don't care if you go in there grabbing scraps right before they do it. And the city will always put up a notice saying, hey, on this date, we're going to go in, poison this swim area, and no one goes swimming in there for a week. Uh, so, uh, hornwort, here's what it looks like. And I literally went out and I grabbed some, and I was born and raised in Texas. I currently live in Minnesota, and yes, you will find coontail all the way across the United States. Uh, so, enjoy that video. The second plant we're going to talk about that you will find all the way from the south to the north, hell, pondweed, this is what it looks like. Yes, you will find it in Texas. I've seen it there. Um, and for whatever reason, I remember growing up in Texas, we all called it duckweed. It's not duckweed. It's pondweed. Duckweed floats on the surface. All right. Now, if you live more north uh, in the United States, you will come across eelgrass. And this is what it'll look like. Show you a few pictures here and then some that I actually grabbed. All kinds of allison area that you will find. In our lake states, there's six different kinds that grow there. Um, you know, so if you want to think nature friendly, don't uproot it. I promise you you will find all three of these plants floating loosely somewhere, and that's because these plants are considered a nuisance. They're beautiful in our tanks, but boat people hate them. Why? Because they get wrapped up in the propellers and cause all kinds of problems. So, in a nutshell, buy six plants. The ones that survive, they're your go-to plants for the time being until you learn everything else. And then go from there. Or go pick a few pond weeds, throw them in a tank, and start learning that way. I hope you've all had a wonderful day. And if you're down in the dumps, you're having a bad day, get up and do something about it. I'll catch you next time. Thank you, everyone.